Okay, let's do some algebra practice question. First things first, I'm going to explain a topic or a concept that I'm constantly going to refer to, which is known as the left hand side and the right hand side. Okay, I will speak about this. <clears throat> the left hand side is everything on the left of my equal sign and the right hand side is everything on the right of my equal sign. So if I change from left to right, my symbol changes from positive to negative. If I change the positive symbol from right to left, I will change my negative symbol. So the symbol just flips when you move from left to right. So this is what I will speak about. The easy questions I will do in green, the hard, medium questions I'll do in yellow, and the hard questions I'll do in red. Okay? Let's look at the first one. Well, the first one, I always want to isolate my x. Isolating means I want to put it one side. Usually the left hand side, it's a, lot, it's a lot more prettier to look at. So I'm going to transfer my 2 to the right, from left to right, that becomes negative 2. Okay, you get the idea, 4 minus 2 is 2. So my final answer is x is equal to 2. Let's look at it again. Hmm. So I'm going to transfer from left to right, it becomes negative 4. There's two ways you can do it. You can do it the American way. American way is subtract 4 on both sides to show it cancels. Or you can just transfer it from left to right. I like transferring. So that becomes 2x is equal to 4. Now x has a coefficient, which means it's a value in front of a variable. And I have to divide both sides by the coefficient. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. Let's see how this looks in, how it looks uh, looks in theory. So in theory, it would be something like 2 times 2 over 2, cancel, cancel. Okay, this means 2 multiply 2. That little dot there is multiplication. Okay, so it's the exact same thing of saying 2 times 2. Okay, let's go to yellow now. I think yellow might be a little bit more tricky. In this case, I'm just going to divide by my coefficient first. Divide first, I'm left with x squared is equal to 16. Now to get rid of a square, I can place it inside of a square root. Let's see how this looks in theory. In theory, it would look something like this. x times x. And we have a little 2 here. So we can cancel out one of them, move this forward, and multiply it with the square root coefficient. So it's just simply x. So x will therefore be plus minus 4. Why do we say plus minus? Well, we have 4 times negative 4. That gives me positive 16, right? But we can also say, well, 4 times 4 is equal to 16. So which one is it really? Hmm, we don't know. Okay, I just want to see if I'm recording. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. Let's go over to the next question. Okay, so the next question, the first thing I want to do is I want to factorize. Okay, I see both of them contain a 3, right? 6 has factors of 3 and 2, so I can take out a 3. Both of them contain an x, so I can simply take out a 3x. So if I divide 3x with 6x squared, I'm left with 2x. And for the 3, if I take out the 3x, I'm left with 1 is equal to 0. So now I have to do two separate calculations. The first calculation is I'm going to divide both sides by 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1. Anything divided by 0 is 0. So I'm left with 3x is equal to 0. And if I divide 3 again, both sides, that's just x is equal to 0. So you can sort of make this conclusion now, well, if any x value is equal to 0 on the left side, is equal to right side, the right hand side is 0, our first x will always be 0, or second x or third x, depending on your order of calculations. So for the second one, <coughs> I'll do it over here. For the second x we have, I'll just rewrite this again so we can see how it completely looks in theory. Divide both sides by 3x. And why can we divide? We can divide because parentheses also just simply means multiply. So this value is multiplying with this value. Okay. If I divide again by 0, I'm left with 2x plus 1. It's equal to 0. Move 
from right to left, this becomes 2x is equal to negative 1. I then say, well, x is equal to negative 1 over 2, since I divided both sides by 2. So there's my two answers. I have two answers now. So how do we know when we have one answer and when we have two answers? Well, we look at this thing. We look at whatever exponent, exponent just means to the power of, we look at the exponent above x. That shows me how many intercepts, or, or let's, let's just keep it simple for now. That shows us how many x values we have. So in this case, I have x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1 over 2, negative 1 over 2. That, res that corresponds with my x squared. So let's look, at, let's look at this one. Hmm, x3. So what does this mean? Now it means that, well, all of a sudden, I have three solutions. Right? X is supposed to be three values. So the first thing's first. I'm going to move x to the left. Okay, so this gives me x cubed minus x is equal to zero. I can factor, both of them contain an x. I can factor an x. Just means I'm taking out, right? So if I multiply it back in, it's just x cubed, negative x. You see, it's the exact same equation. Now we can already see, well, based on what I did in my previous example, the first x is equal to 0. But now we're left with this. x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So here I can use something that's known as perfect cubes. Or well, what does perfect cube mean? Let's say I have some squared value minus some other squared value. In this type of situation, I can then say, well, a minus b, a plus b. Okay? If we do this, we get a squared minus ba plus ab. a, b, b, a is the same thing, minus b squared. These two will cancel because it's the same thing. Look, B, A, A, B, it's the same thing. Uh, a multiplication principle you need to know is the order of multiplication simply does not matter. Okay, it does not matter. Then we're still left with A squared minus B squared. The exact same thing. Look, you use this stuff. So in this case, I'm going to do the same thing. X minus 1, X plus 1 is equal to 0. Now we can solve. We can now say, well, X minus 1 is equal to 0, therefore x is equal to 1. And if I do it again, x plus 1 is equal to 0. You can say x is equal to negative 1. So we found our three solutions. Our three solutions is x is equal to negative 1, x is equal to 1, and x is equal to 0. I have no idea why I did this one in blue. Uh, this might be considered a red question for grade 9 and 10. Maybe for grade 9. But for grade 10, it should be yellow. Should be yellow. Okay, let's go on to the next one. The next one is a green one. Very easy stuff. All we do is we multiply, cross multiply. Okay. So we get 8x is equal to 16. Divide both sides by 8. That gives me x is equal to 2. We can just cross multiply the, the denominator on the right hand side to the left hand side. Or we can multiply with the reciprocal. The reciprocal means the opposite of 1 over x squared, uh, 2x. We can multiply this with 2x over 1 to create 1. So that's all we do. But a shortcut we can take is to cross multiply. Okay, that's f. Right. So, let's look at the next one. The next one I'm going to break up. Here's where exponential rules become important. So I can break this thing up, right? What this means is I need to divide this by this. I need to divide this by this. And I need to divide this by this. So I can break it up into three separate fractions. You can obviously skip these steps. It's not really needed. But I'm going to do it for the video. 47x to the 4th over. This simply means the exact same thing. I'm just writing it differently. 24x cubed over 2x cubed. 
Now what I can do is I can actually break this up even further. I can say, well, 6 can be rewritten as 3 times 2 times x to the power of 5 or x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 2. I can place that over 2 times x to the power of 3. The goal is, the goal in this question is, right, goal. The goal in this question, I'm going to actually raise this because I need that part. So the goal would be to create something similar, both top and bottom, so you can cancel them. Okay, that's the goal. And we can add this by, I need to somehow find a 2. Is there any way I can take 74, 2? Hmm, this should be easy. It's 35, 37, right? 37, 37 times 2 times x to the power of 3 times x over. Guys, the only thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm breaking up. I'm breaking up what's given as 74. Okay? Wait. 30 times 2 is 60, 14. Correct. 37. And then for the final one, I guess you can see where I'm going, is I can say 12 times 2 times x to the power of 3, and we can say this is x times... For practice sake, it would be, it would be quite good if you, if you practice this method. Not bad. <sighs> Just had to drink some water. Remember, stay hydrated. <clears throat> Let's cancel out some guys. Cancel the 2, 2, x, x. I'm left with... 3x squared plus cancel out the 2, cancel, cancel, cancel. That gives me 37x. And I can cancel, 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 cancel. That gives me 12. If we look in theory how this looks, well, theoretically, this is what it would look like. I'm just going to do the first one. 2 times 2 to the power of 1 times x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 2. And if I want to take this from a denominator to a numerator, I need to flip the exponents. Okay, flip it. Now this is when, when exponents multiply, they add together when exponents multiply. Very important. When exponents divide, they subtract. In this case, I'm going to say, well, 3 plus minus 3 is 0, so they cancel out. I can say 2, multiply 2 to the power of negative 1, they cancel out because it becomes 2 to the power of 0, which is equal to 1. Another exponential rule you need to be familiar with trying to solve these algebraic questions. Okay, let's move on. Okay, now we get to the hard ones. So in this case, we're going to have to use authentic division which is set the bottom equal to 0 and solve. So set x plus 2 is equal to 0, solve for x. Okay, I solved for x, now I'm going to draw a box. Let me redo that. So what is inside this box? Well, inside this box is going to be all my coefficients. Okay, all my coefficients. Or all my numbers, you can think about it that way. So let's put down a 3, let's put down a 5, if there's nothing in front of x that means uh, 1, 1 minus 2. See how they link? I'll draw a little line here. This is how you do synthetic division. And then a 2. Okay, or you can do long division depending on what method your teacher uses. I, I love the synthetic division. Now this, this negative 2 we solved, we're going to move or we're going to place in front of this box. So first things first, what do we do? Well, we bring down this 3. We bring down this 3 and place the 3 here. We do nothing with the first one. We leave him. Okay? Then the equation will look something like this. Negative 2 multiply 3. This answer we moved forward. Then we work down. So 5 plus whatever answer I got. Then we're going to do it again. So let's say this is the answer. 2 times the answer, move it here, plus down. Then again, 2 
times the new answer, move it here, plus down. We should end up at zero, if it works out. Okay, uh, let's do it. Okay, so, negative two times five, ah, times three, is negative six, five plus negative six is negative one. We have two, multiply negative one, which is positive 2, bring it down. That becomes 1. Negative 2 times 1, uh, let me change the color again. Negative 2 times 1 gives me negative 2, bring it down. 1 plus negative 2 is negative 1. Then negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, and we end up with a 0. So if I end up with a zero, I now have a new equation. Now, instead of using x to the four, we're now going to say three x to the power th to the power of three. These are my new coefficients, my new coefficients of my cubic function now, or cubic equation. Let's put it that way. Minus one x squared plus x minus one. Now, this is all that's required to solve this equation, but you can do it again. But to do it again, you need to be familiar with the rational zero theorem to find this x. In this case, the, x is, the first x is already given to us, so it's easy. When we divide with, with a, a linear function, with one factor, then it's very easy. But if they, if they don't even give us this value, and they say find all the possible zeros, then you need to be familiar with the rational zero theorem, which I have another video on. So this would then be my final answer in this equation. Okay, let's look at this one. Same thing, the synthetic division, first one, find y. <coughs> so our point is to eliminate one so we can get to a new quadratic function. And we need to eliminate it using this. So firstly, find y, so set y equal to zero, y minus 2 is equal to 0, therefore y is equal to 2. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to draw a box. We're going to place our 2 that we just found. So what happens now? Well, now I don't have any coefficients for, because this is how the equation actually looks. y cubed plus 0 y squared plus 0 x minus 8. So now we have to use 0 as coefficients. We actually have to use it. So let's do it. So we have 3. Oh no, we have nothing. We have 1. We have 1. 1 is my coefficient. Then we have 0, 0, and negative 8. So bring the 1 down. If we bring the 1 down, it becomes 1. Then we have 2 times 1. That gives me 2. Bring the 2 down. 2 plus 0 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Bring it down again. It gives me 4. Or, excuse me, 4. Then we have 2 times 4, which is 8. And that gives me 0. Now I have my final answer. I have y squared plus 2x plus 4. Hey, 2y, excuse me. 2y plus 4. And then we can do it again. Or we can solve this one using the quadratic equation. Is this one even solvable? Hmm. It should, maybe not, because my c is greater than my a. Let's see, let's see if this one's solvable. So this would be my final answer, by the way. Th that's your final answer. But I want to dive into this one, so let's identify A. A is 1, B is equal to 2, and C is equal to 4. Um, I expect students that's watching this video to, to have some basic idea of, of the mathematics. So we have negative B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A. Let's see if this is possible, if the discriminant is possible. This would be the discriminant. If we find a negative value, it's not possible to solve. 
so let's see b squared is going to be uh let's see b squared is going to be two squared minus four a c yeah no this one's not solvable because we have four minus 16 and then we have uh, the square root of negative 12 which is then 12 i mm, so we can't solve it from that point forward so that was out of interest and that would be my final answer